blessed day, students, praying that you all are in good health, safe and sound in your own home. I am really glad that you still find time to listen to this video lesson, and that is highly appreciated. Anyways, today is another day to learn more about practical research, quantitative research in your case. So, let us start. This time, let's talk about the research instrument. After going through this module, you are expected to classify the types of questions used in research instrument, recognize the types of validity, reliability used in the sample scenarios, and construct a sample research instrument. One of the crucial parts of research that you might experience is the construction of a research instrument. Why? Because developing a research instrument requires a lot of checking or validation from the experts. Always take in mind that the quality of your research findings depends on the quality of your research instrument. Let's talk about instrument versus instrumentation. In research, an instrument is a general term used by the researcher for measuring devices such as surveys, questionnaires, tests, checklists, etc. On the other hand, instrumentation is the action which is the process of developing, testing, and using the instrument. Take note that the instrument is the device while instrumentation is a course of action according to Prieto, Noval, and Carey in 2017. Now that you have learned the difference between instrument and instrumentation, let us now explore the process of developing a research instrument. Here are the given guidelines on how to develop research instrument used in qualitative research according to Prieto, Naval, and Carey in 2017, and Faltado et al. in 2017. Step 1. Background Do basic research on the chosen variables or construct of the research study. Choose a construct that you can use to create the objective of the questionnaire. When we say construct, it means the characteristics that you wish to measure or to evaluate you in your research instrument. For example, weight, academic performance, etc. After identifying the construct, it is easy to state the purpose or objective of the questionnaire and the research questions as well. Step 2. Questionnaire Conceptualization Select a response scale where the respondents answer the questions in your research study. Some of the skills you might use in your research questionnaire are the following. You may use yes or no, or yes, no, neither, or you can use the Likert scale that measures. This scale is used to measure behavior quantitatively. Here is an example of Likert scale. For the three-point scale, we have always, sometimes, never. For the four-point scale, strongly agree, agree, disagree, and strongly disagree. For the five-point Likert scale, we are very satisfactory, satisfactory, neutral, unsatisfactory, and very unsatisfactory. The next sub-step in step 2 is to create questions based on the objectives of the research study. These are the guidelines in developing questions for your questionnaire. First, the questions should be clear, concise, and simple. Avoid lengthy and confusing questions. Second, classify questions under each statement based on your problem statement. Third, questions should be consistent within the needs of the study. Next, 
avoid using sensitive and debatable questions. Lastly, avoid using jargon or unfamiliar words in question. Next is to choose the type of questions in developing your questionnaire. It can be dichotomous questions or questions with only two choices such as yes or no or like and dislike. Or open-ended questions. It refers to questions that normally answers the question why. But take in mind that this type of question is usually used in qualitative research. For example, what do you like most about your school? For the close-ended questions, also called multiple choice questions, it consists of three or more choices. Let's have an example for these close-ended questions. What is the highest educational attainment of your mother? The respondent may choose elementary, high school, or college. Next, rank order scale questions, or the questions that ask for ranking the given choices or items. Example, rank the following based on their importance in work as senior high school student. 3 for the highest and 1 for the lowest. Doing homeroom activities, going to library, and using computer. Next is the rating scale questions. It is the Likert scale form, and it is a type of questions that measures the weights of the response of the respondents. Let's have an example. The following statements will be rated as 1, 2, or 3. I feel lazy doing homework and I am motivated to learn because of interesting learning tools. Once you have already done creating your research instrument, the next thing that you must accomplish is to establish the validity of your instrument. But what is validity in research? And why do you need to assure that your instrument is valid? Validity refers to a degree to which the instrument measures what it intends to measure. It involves collecting and analyzing data to assess the accuracy of an instrument. An instrument could only be valid if it measures what it's supposed to. Establishing the validity of the instrument is important to ensure that the instrument accurately measures what it really needs to measure. Here are ways to assess the validity of a set of measurement. First is the phase validity. This is a subjective type of assessment of the research instrument. This is the simplest and the easiest type of validity wherein the validator skims the overview of the instrument in order to form an opinion. Moreover, it is often criticized as the weakest type of validity used in research instruments according to Stephanie in 2015. Example you happen to see a questionnaire that measures mathematical ability and you read the set of questions. Right after reading through the questions, you decided that it seems like this is a good measure of mathematical ability. This shows that this is a subjective judgment that clearly indicates its weakest form, according to Trokim in 2020. The next type of validity is the content validity. This type of assessment refers to the appropriateness of the content of an instrument. An expert to the content or professional 
that is familiar to the construct being measured is needed in this type of validity. The expert makes a judgment about the degree to which the items in the questionnaire cover all the relevant parts of the construct it aims to measure. If, by chance, some aspects are missing from the instrument, or irrelevant aspects are included, then the validity of the instrument is threatened, according to Middleton in 2020. For instance, you as the researcher proceeds to the expert to validate your research instrument. The validator lays out all the criteria that should be met by your research instrument. Then, the validator uses this set of criteria as a checklist to assess your instrument according to Valeria et al. 2019. Moving on, let's have the criterion validity. This type of validity measures how well the relationship between the result of your instrument to the result of another instrument. A criterion is an external measurement of the same thing. To evaluate criterion validity, the correlation between the result of your instrument and the result of the other instrument is computed. If it resulted in high correlation, then your instrument truly measures what it intends to measure according to Middleton in 2020. For example, an English teacher makes an instrument to measure students' English writing ability. In order to assess how well the instrument measures the student's writing skills, she finds an existing instrument that is considered a valid measurement of English writing ability and compares the results when the same group of students takes both tests. Now let's talk about the construct validity. It defines how well a test measures what it claims to measure. It is used to know whether the operational definition of a construct aligns with the true theoretical meaning of a concept. A construct refers to a concept or characteristic that can't be directly observed but can be measured by observing other indicators that are associated with it. For instance, there is no observable entity called depression that we can measure directly. But based on existing psychological research and theory, we can measure depression based on a collection of symptoms and indicators, such as low self-confidence and low energy levels, according to Middleton in 2020. Step 4 is establishing the reliability of the questionnaire. Reliability refers to how accurate and precise the measuring instrument is. It yields consistent responses over repeated measurements. In order to have a reliable instrument, you need to have questions that yield consistent scores when asked repeatedly. Here are ways to assess the reliability of an instrument. First, is stability or test-retest reliability. This is the simplest type of reliability where the same questionnaire is administered twice to the same sample at a different point in time and the correlation between two sets of scores is computed. Split half method, also called equivalent or parallel forms. This is done by administering two different sets of questionnaires, but with the same topic to the same sample and the correlation between two sets of scores is computed. The third is the internal consistency. This is when the instrument measures a specific concept. It is an estimate based on a single form of a test administered on a single occasion. Take in mind that all valid instrument is reliable, but not all reliable instrument is valid. To clearly understand this statement, 
Let us say that you have flu and take a thermometer to measure your temperature. The thermometer you use gives a reliable result, but not always valid because the thermometer is not calibrated accurately, so the result might be 2 degrees lower than its true value. Step 5. Pilot Testing of the Questionnaire once you have done assessing the validity and reliability of the instrument, the next step is to take the next step to take is to pilot test the questionnaire before distributing it to the target respondents of the study. Pilot testing is like pre-testing the instrument. You may find 10 to 15 people to answer the questionnaire. In this process, participants could put remarks on some questions. This could help you enhance your questions. Step 6 is to revise the questionnaire. After identifying some problem in your questionnaire, revise the questionnaire based on the feedback of the participants during pilot testing. However, do not forget that the questionnaire should match the research objective. That ends our lesson today. Thank you for listening and see you next time.